Okay, hello. So today we're going to do a simple example on pthreads. So what I'm going to do is a simple addition program such that given a number, each thread will count up to that number and then give out the total sum. So for example, if I have three threads that count up to number one, the total sum will be three. And if I have four threads that count up to the number one, the total number will be four. Okay, so first we're going to include just a basic library, which is our IO stream library. So we can use our C out. And also we're going to include what we'll need in order to use pthreads, which is the pthread library, which is pthread.h. So I'm going to do um, just add this in. And then I'm going to make our sum a global variable and set it equal to zero. Now the function that we will be using will be, well, I will just call add and we will declare it just like this when we're going to use our threads. And then I'm going to create something which we'll be using later to help uh, with our mutex locks. So we're going to declare mutex t equals mute, mut. Alright, so now we're going to start our main function. And first we're going to create our pthreads. So we started by doing pthread underscore t. And I'm just going to create an array of threads. So I'm going to call it thread. And for this example, I will we will use up to 10 pthreads. Okay, now int num, which will be used for the, which um, the number that will store how many threads the user wants to use. And then I'm going to use a uh, number count, which I'll declare as a long, which is the number that the user wants to count up to. So now just a basic cout statement where we're going to do our, we're going to enter the number of threads between 1 and 10. and allow the user to input the number, which we will store as num. Um, okay. And then we will now ask the user what number they would like to count to. And then store that value in our account. Okay, so now this is where we're going to start getting into our threads. So we're going to do a for loop, which will go from int x equals zero to where x is lower than the number that was declared by the user. Oh, and we're not going to do any error check, and we're just going to assume that the user simply just enter something less than 10, and between 1 and 10. So it didn't finish off this for loop. And now inside this loop, we're going to start with our, start creating our pthread. So the function used for creating pthread is uh, pthread create. And then we're going to do a reference to thread x, which is, which goes up to, which um, basically uses one of the threads that we created up here. And then we're going to enter a value after it, which is a, basically just enter null after this value. And then enter the name of the function we're going to use, which is going to be add. And now we're going to be passing the value that uh, we're going to be passing a value as a void star. And the value that we are using is count. So we're going to put this here. So now after um, what this essentially is going to do is that for each thread that it's given, so for each uh, thread that it has, it will go to the add function for this specific thread and it will use this value count as its parameter, which will be detailed later. So now we're going to use something which is uh, what happens after all the threads have performed their functions. So once again, we're going to do um, we're going to go through a loop of all the threads that we have used. 
and we're going to do something called pthread join and then we're going to do thread x so that it'll go through every thread that was declared and we're going to enter the second value to be num essentially what this is doing is that it's making sure that all the it essentially means that all of the threads that you created are about to be terminated well are terminated so basically everything has finished up and the program is ready to continue and then ooh, wow. and of course at the end we're going to see out the overall sum that is generated by our threads and then in the loss, our main would have returned zero okay so now this is where we're going to start declaring the void function that the uh, function that our threads are going to use so we're going to use the function add and then we're going to pass the parameter void count and I name it count just so you know that this count and this count is basically the same thing so essentially the value that's right here is being passed down to the parameter in this function okay so the first thing that we do is that since we have it since we're passing it as a void star we essentially wanted to convert it back to our long that count was initialized as so what we're going to do is going to create a variable I'm going to call num and then we're just going to cast the void star as a long function as a as a long data type so now we've successfully converted this void star into a long which we'll be able to use now this is where this pthread mutex uh, variable is going to come into play so what's essentially the mutex is is that it ensures that only one thread is performing some function at a time so what we essentially want to see in our output is that one function for example if we're going to have um, our program count all numbers add up all the numbers from one to three one thread will add one to the sum and then two to the sum ten three to the sum so that the total sum the sum value that we're here is going to be six so now after that thread leaves the mutex and unlocks it the second thread comes in and it's going to do add one to the sum add two to the sum add three to the sum so when it adds one it's going to be six plus one equals seven and then when it adds two it's going to be seven plus nine seven plus two equals nine and then it'll keep doing that for how many threads you have so essentially one thread is adding to the sum at once so we're gonna do that right here we're gonna create our pthread mutex and it's gonna be locked so basically it it just it allows this one thread to enter at once so that other threads have to wait till it's finished so we're gonna put in our variable that we declared in here as a reference down here so now we're just going to do our another loop we're going to initialize the next loop so we're going to do for long x equals one since we're going to start counting from one and then x is less than or equal to the number and then we're going to increase x by one each cycle So now we're just going to do just our basic function. So we're going to do sum plus equals x. So we're adding to our sum. And then we're going to do a C out sum uh, backslash t. And then our variable x. Now what this essentially is doing is that this C out statement, we are using this to see what exactly is happening within our function. So I'm going to run this program twice, one with mutexes in and one without the mutexes in, just to show you how mutexes are working. And then, of course, now that we've performed our function, we do our pthread mutex unlock and enter our mutex variable again. And this completes our function. So this program is basically uh, doing what I said earlier that it adds up to a certain number based on how many threads you have so what we're gonna do now is gonna see if it actually works correctly so we're gonna save it and now we're gonna have to run it so I'll keep the um, code over here and now in order to run it you're gonna have to do G plus plus 
and then thread whatever your thread uh, whatever your C++ file is called output I'm gonna put it to thread and then we're gonna have to do hyphen p thread for it to run correctly and just a small error let's see where this is and Oh, okay. I accidentally put this right here. Okay, so that should be fine now. Okay. So now we're gonna run our run our function, which I call thread. And now, for example, I'm gonna enter just to see if it's working properly. Just something simple. So we're gonna have five, and we're gonna let it count up to the number one. So here you see basically the first thread is adding this right. So the first number is the sum and then the second number is the number being added to it. So of course since we have five threads you count up to one, they're all gonna count up to five. So we see that it's working properly. So now let's do a larger example. So let's do seven threads and we're gonna count up to five. So as you can see what's happening here is that you have one thread that starts it adds 1 to the sum, adds 2 to the sum, 3 to the sum, then 4 to the sum, then 5 to the sum. So basically this section right here is doing this right here. It's just adding the number. And this is only specific to one thread because it's inside our mutex block. So now that it's completed a for loop and unlocks the mutex and allows another function and not allows another thread to go inside. So this is where our next thread begins. So it's adding 1 to 16, 1 to 15, which gives you 16, 2 to 16, which gives you 18, and then 3 to 18, 4 to 21, 5 to 25. So we're basically getting the numbers we want. So as you can see, same thing down here, it adds 1, adds 2, adds 3, adds 4, adds 5. So this is essentially what's happening. Each thread is allowed, is using this a lot of time inside the mutex in order to just calculate the value. And as you see, at the end, we get a value of 105. So now what we're going to do is see what happens when we do not include our mutexes. So I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of this. And now we're just going to have an unused variable pthread mutex up here, but that's fine. So we're going to save this. Uh, we're going to recompile and then we're going to run it again. So we're going to use the same values we used before. We're going to have seven threads. We're going to have each of them count up to five. So as you can see, as opposed to what happens up here, everything looks extremely unorganized. You have some value two, and then just another value one. And what essentially is happening here is that it's doing tab twice because during the output from the CL statement, basically another thread is trying to do the this same this same function here. So you have just some numbers coming out of random. So yeah, you see that you have this two here, this one here, and all these numbers are just just all, all over the place. But at the end, you notice that we still get the proper number. So basically, the importance of the mutex is that it makes sure that only one thread has access to the critical section at a time. Because if multiple threads have access, you're going to get a bunch of weird data, and you're not going to get the output that you're going to expect. And of course, since this is just a simple adding function, no matter what, we're going to have the same output at the end. But if it's another kind of function where you need one thread to do something at once, just one, without the mutex lock, your last value, whatever your outcome could be completely different simply because um, each thread is trying to access its mutex at the same time. So yes, this is just a quick tutorial on how pthreads work. So just to kind of go through what happens in the code is that we just have our global variable up here, which is a sum, so that it's a basically easier for us to add up at, in this function. Uh, we declare our our function up here. We initialize our function up here, and then of course declare down here. But we're gonna we're gonna do a pointer to the function, and then pass a void star parameter. We use pthread to basically create the number of threads that we can have. So in this case. Of course, I just made an array, but of course, you can specify the number of, eight, number of threads you actually want to use or the max number and things of that nature. And then the essential heart of 
what's going on is here where we give each thread its identifier so thread zero uh will perform add thread one before add things like that so put the identifier for the thread here enter null right here enter the function you want to use right here and then pass whatever parameter you have at the void star and then when you get down here make sure you do the proper conversion of the void star to whatever you want and then you perform your function and of course as seen previously we had our p thread mutex we had this inside of our mutexes so that each one performs it each um thread performs um this function while not being interrupted by another thread and of course uh after you're done with all your threads, always do a p thread join simply because a p thread join essentially waits for all the threads to finish so that your program can end correctly. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use p threads in C on a Linux machine.